Silicon Valley, California. It's a really thrilling day for me to present the company and our first product, Lucid Air. When I joined the company seven years ago, I did so with a clear mission, and that mission was to take the electric car to the next level. I felt that there was so much more potential in electrification, which was yet unfulfilled. And we're really close now to fulfilling that mission with the launch of Lucid Air, which is going into production in our plant in Arizona, spring 21. What really excites me today is that we'll, for the first time, show the whole lot collectively. We'll see the fusion of the art and the science, the technology, all coming together in an incredible product which will offer the customer so much more luxury and comfort, incredible performance, unrivaled range, so much space, just the volume of the frunk and the HMI. It's a real beautiful piece of art, but the technology that underpins it is just out of this world. And what excites me is our technology is designed in such a way that it's truly mass producible. A battery pack, our motors, our inverters are designed for mass, mass production. And that means that we can cascade this technology down through price ranges and the man in the street will benefit. But you know, ultimately, all mankind will benefit because we all breathe this air. This is truly a team sport. It's not me, it's the 1,001 people behind me. My role is to catalyze all that brain power use it together and create a methodology and a steely determination that we're going to do this. We all start somewhere. No one is born with a blueprint for their journey. It's the building blocks we first play with that give life its shape, where purpose reveals itself and the pursuit begins in earnest. There's no legacy to prop us up, but then there's no legacy holding us back. We find our own footing, hitch a ride on a distant dream, and just go. Uncertain of what we'll encounter along the way. The people we meet, the challenges we face, the memories we make the obstacles, and the breakthroughs. Searching for a window in a wall, then discovering a door to open. Not even our own doubts, or those who doubted us, stand a chance. Season five, first race. Momentum is a stubborn friend. Smile, start of the season. Like explorers who eternally seek a new horizon, we anticipate risk. We push past fear. Everyone stumbles when they climb a mountain but not everyone can imagine the view from the summit. To others, our destination seemed like a childhood fantasy. And it was, until we willed it into existence. Passion finds a way. Today, we celebrate all that we've done and all that we intend to do. We face the future head on, persevere through the improbable, and stay true to our vision, giving us the power to see where others couldn't. If the journey has taught us anything, it's that it doesn't matter where you start. What matters is how big you're willing to dream. I'm wrapped with fear.
From the very beginning, our core mission was to accelerate the adoption of electrification and really take the electric vehicle to the next level and in doing, take the automobile to the next level. This idea of if we make this vehicle compelling enough and amazing enough and we take away any obstacle in our consumer's mind of whether or not electric car is a good thing for them. That's the goal, that's the mission, is really to accelerate that adoption and, and, and make the best car in the world. When we were first thinking about the design of the car, I really wanted to create this vehicle that is effortlessly sleek, seamless, something that just flowed through the air without being overly aggressive. And through that vision, we came up with this idea of a jet, an aircraft. So early on, we started working towards this very clean design and really simplify the vehicle down to its very core essence. The car really has just one line that goes all the way around. And that became this key defining feature. And all the other details play off of that one line. At the front of the car, we have this incredible light blade, and that's really enabled by our micro lens array. That allows the lights to be very simple and very linear. So we start at that front line and we bring it all the way through the fender, right up the side of the car and around the rear of the car into the taillight signature. This is enabled by the fact that we have our shut lines around the side of the vehicle rather than down the back. That allows us to have a single piece taillight from one side to the other. In fact, this is the largest taillight ever, and that helps create this seamless aesthetic. To me, it's really important to be bold through simplicity. One of the advantages Lucid has is our drivetrain components are incredibly compact and very power dense. What that allows us to do is think completely different about the space of the vehicle. In our case, we push all those components down and away and give all that extra space to the passenger compartment and creates a very unique paradigm where we're larger on the inside and more compact on the outside. We're really redefining what a luxury sedan can be. As a result, we've been able to create this incredible front trunk or frunk, and we're proud to say it's the biggest frunk ever made. It's got a double-decker storage, a fold-away cargo cover, and it really becomes an additional bonus of our space concept. The trunk of the Lucid Air is really split into two levels. The upper level is for larger objects as well as longer objects, for example, like a surfboard, where you can utilize the split seat and allow incredibly long cargo capacity for the rear. In addition to the upper storage, we also have this second tier of storage down below underneath the bifold cover. And if you combine those two together, plus the front, you end up with a cargo capacity that is much greater than a traditional sedan and is more in line with what you would get with an SUV or crossover. Once we established this incredible space concept, we knew we had to think differently about the passenger compartment, so we really divided it into two zones. The front of the vehicle is meant to be more sporty. Typically, we do that in darker colors. As you work your way to the back of the vehicle, this is meant to be a more relaxing environment, and so those areas are always done in lighter, brighter colors to create this duality between the front of the vehicle and the back of the vehicle. We're gonna offer two versions for the rear seating. The first version that we launch with will be a bench seat. We're also gonna offer an executive rear seat. This will recline 45 degrees and take full advantage of the Lucid Air's rear space. In addition to this lounge space, we have this incredible glass canopy. And this is this whole idea of letting light into the vehicle and create a very open and airy experience. With this overall minimalist simplicity of the interior, it was really important that every detail had this feeling of quality and craftsmanship and care. And that's all about how you apply the materials to particular surfaces. It's important that the metal look and feel like metal and how it interacts with the wood feels quality, feels intrinsically valuable. And it's that combination that really gives you that feeling of high craftsmanship. I've always been drawn to sort of the beauty of objects and what makes something remarkable, the quality of the build. It's not just the materials themselves, but really how they all come together. That's been a very important philosophy of how we work. What makes something good design is creating with passion, creating with care, the fit and finishes and attention to details. We're literally measuring the pitch of the stitch the weight of the thread, the suppleness of the leather, 
how deep is the logo debossed into the metal, how it feels to run your hand along the wood, that it actually feels like wood. We're always looking at those little minute details, things that people probably don't even really think about. When I first started at Lucid, we didn't really know who we were in a lot of ways, but we knew we were a California company. It became a very natural fit for us to think about doing interiors and themes that were in very specific locations within California at very specific times of the day and how the light would look like at those locations. The lighting in California is like no other. We looked at the day as a 24-hour period, and we started out at the beginning of the day in Santa Monica. Mid-morning, it was Big Basin. At noontime, it was Santa Cruz. Sunset, it was Tahoe. And then near midnight, it was Mojave Desert. They all had very specific and really beautiful lighting conditions that lent themselves to us starting to talk about what would these color combinations be and how could we incorporate this idea. We decided to have our dream edition developed in the Santa Monica theme. It was really about imagining Santa Monica when the sun hasn't quite risen yet. It's very misty and foggy and you're looking sort of this nebulous haze of grays and whites. We developed this beautiful graphite gray along with the ceramic white interior. We have silvered eucalyptus, which is an ode to driftwood. Santa Monica is the first part of the day. It's an awakening, a starting point, and that just lent itself to our first introduction. It was this perfect, natural connection. Once we established this overall feeling of space in the interior, we put a big emphasis on the displays, and we knew it wasn't about having the most displays or the largest displays. It was about what's the optimal position and form factor for the driving experience. As a result, we came up with this 5K floating display that is completely curved, optimizing the view and touch for the driver, as well as the view out to the road. In addition, we have a large center console display that is optimally placed for both driver and passenger, and it retracts into the center console and exposes a large storage area up front. We also have an incredibly large center console. This has docking for inductive charging and phones, as well as two additional large storage compartments, which is very unique for a vehicle in this class. Even though there was a huge focus on our displays and the touch interface, we still wanted to find that balance of the analog tactile experience. So we put a lot of focus on the steering wheel and how the roller toggles feel in your hands, as well as the center console controls. All of this still celebrates that mechanical feeling and the physical touch of the vehicle. It's so important to balance the digital with the mechanical. When thinking about the Lucid in-car user experience, we realize that our customers are used to a very easy device interaction with the consumer products in their lives. And once they get in a modern vehicle, that experience was broken. At Lucid, we really wanted to try and close that gap. As a result, our focus was really on this idea of simplicity, ease of use, and intuitiveness, and really having an empathy for our customer. That would ensure the time in the car was time well spent. To enhance this, we knew the user interface had to have a certain elegance about it. That meant a real focus on color, on tone, and layering to create a certain ambience inside the vehicle that even integrated into the ambient lighting, enhancing the overall beauty of Lucid Air. This environment is further enhanced by our immersive audio system, completely engineered and developed in-house. With 21 speakers around and above you and over 800 watts of power, Along with our partners, we're bringing a true spatial sound experience that isn't available in any other vehicle today. So the Lucid UX experience actually starts outside the car in our very unique Lucid app. This app will allow you to precondition the vehicle, set a navigation route, check your charge status, and even check upcoming charge locations. 
the app is tied to your Lucid ID, so as you approach the vehicle, it knows it's you, the lighting sequence is activated, the car unlocks, and the door handles present themselves. Once you get inside the vehicle, the car confirms that it's you through facial recognition. This activates all your pre-settings and then loads the trip you just planned. Alexa, lock the front door. The front door is locked. You can use natural voice commands through Alexa to play music, set a stop on your navigation, or even check your calendar and appointments. One of our key features is something we call application flow. When you activate navigation, music, or phone, you get key information and functionality up above. When you swipe down, that opens the full application on the screen below. The center display is also where you activate climate control and HVAC features, as well as settings. We've enabled over-the-air updates, which allows it to stay cutting edge and refreshed over time. The digital customer journey is designed to be seamless from web to retail, to application, to overall in-car experience. We want our customers to feel like we've anticipated their needs without needlessly complicating anything. It goes without saying, we're all really proud of the design and key features that we brought into the Lucid Air. But this has only been made possible by incredible engineering and true innovation with our in-house technologies. Doing everything in-house is a belief-based philosophy, and to achieve that, you really need to attract the most brilliant engineers and designers in the world. So to enable the, the space concept to work, there's an old adage, if you want to break the rules, first you have to master them. So it required mastery of the five key elements of electric cars, electric powertrain, and we do all that in-house. So the battery, motor, transmission, power electronics or inverter, and software. It's this inflection point of hardware, software, art and science that really becomes fulfilled in our first product, the Lucid Air. To miniaturize, but to improve the efficiency at the same time. That is a really tough thing to pull off. You could do one or the other, but to combine the two, that's what I'm really proud of. So really, perhaps, if we were to distill one key metric for the prowess of an EV company, surely it would be range. And I'm really delighted that Lucid Air has been independently validated as achieving over 500 miles, just an EPA estimate. But you know, there's something which is more underlying than range itself, and that is efficiency. Because really, anyone can go and stuff a huge battery in an electric car and get a huge range. That's dumb range. What we want to do is create smart range. And why I'm thrilled that we've got over 500 miles is because we've done it with a significantly smaller battery pack. We are over 15% more efficient than the nearest competitor. So Lucid Air is achieving over four miles per kilowatt hour, which is really unprecedented for a car of that level of luxury and interior size. Now driving from here in the Bay Area down to Los Angeles and from New York to Washington DC is a true reality. And I like to think of it as goodbye range anxiety and hello range confidence. I'm particularly proud of our battery pack for so many reasons. First of all, it's very sculpted and forms part of the crash structure and envelope of the car. The underside of our pack is just gently curved, forms part of the aerodynamic diffuser of the car. So our pack influences the range of the car, not just by the batteries that are in it, but because of its curved shape, makes the car more aerodynamic to sigh through the air more cleanly and get more range that way. But there's a whole other dimension to this. Its sheer manufacturability is a breakthrough. Our pack is designed like Lego bricks designed for mass production. That keeps the cost down. It means that we can have a higher quality solution, more reliable. Looking ahead, it can apply to smaller, more affordable cars. And that's very much part of the Lucid dream and vision. Then we look at the core technology in that pack. The thermal technology is a breakthrough. We have a thermal system, which is much more reliable, much more dependable, and more efficient than our nearest competitor. It's also more compact. We have a pack which can take 300 kilowatts of fast charge over 900 volts. 
No one else has that. This is a groundbreaking. We've developed the right cell chemistry with our cell supply partners, a unique design of cell for lucid air. So the pack is a multi-dimensional, multi-functional, integral part of the core architecture of the vehicle. A really big part of our battery pack technology is our BMS, or battery monitoring system. And it's so instrumental in monitoring the health of the battery. But BMS does so much more than that. It helps our thermal management, and it helps the life expectancy of the pack. And it is a significant contributor to range efficiency. I'm particularly proud that over the last two years, Lucid, under its Ativa technology wing, has been the official supplier for all 24 cars in the world's premier electric race car series, the World Championship. That pack was created, conceived, engineered, developed, and is actually manufactured here in this very building. And that pack really transformed the sport. We offer double the capacity of its predecessor. It allowed, finally, a car to run a complete race distance with a single charge. We've had zero failures. We've had 100% reliability. We've accrued so much knowledge that that technology that we've developed and finessed on the racetracks is now finding its way directly into the Lucid Air, and everyone who drives a Lucid will know that underneath their feet is race-proven battery technology. The surprising thing here is the performance of the car. And I may like fast cars, but honestly, I didn't set out to create a car as fast as Lucid Air. I set out to create a car with amazing range that was really going to change the world. Even with my desire to make that range happen with the smallest pack imaginable. Even with great efficiency that we've got, we still need a relatively large pack. And the byproduct of that is, if you've got a relatively large amount of energy, you end up with a relatively large amount of available power. So all we needed to do was make our motors and inverters and the rest of the system large enough to actually use that power that's available. And you might think we'd end up with unduly inefficient other elements. No, this miniaturization process and this relentless search for efficiency has resulted in the rest of the system being minute. And yet, unbelievably, we have over a thousand horsepower. I'm particularly proud of the motor that we'd felt in house because it's done two things. We've miniaturized it. And at the same time, we've made it super efficient and power dense. And that's really a rare combination. We've been able to achieve that because we've got some real joined up thinking between motor and transmission team. In fact, they're not two separate teams. They operate together as a single team because we think of the motor and transmission here at Lucid as a single inertial system. And that's led to quite a breakthrough. Our motor systems are complete units. That's electric motor, transmission, differential, and inverter. That is a unit just this size. It weighs 73 kilos and is up to 500 kilowatts. There is nothing else in the marketplace even close to that. Now, because our motors are so compact, we're able to fit them in different configurations within the car. We can fit one, two, or three, each of which is 600 horsepower. But this is the beauty of this sort of joined up thinking, and this is all synergistic with the space concept. So we've spoken a lot about how we've reduced the size of the power units, but the space concept extends beyond that. We have a very innovative heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, a HVAC. We have two independent blower channels to feed air into the front of the cabin and the expansive rear of the cabin. Conventional car has a single blower, which is often a noisy thing, inside the cabin with the occupants. We've got two blowers outside of the cabin, and they fit neatly integrated right above the front power unit. And this gives space not just for the occupants, but it creates a space concept for the front, which is unparalleled in its volume. And in fact, we can fit the volume of four competitor EVs trunks all in our single trunk with liters to spare. 
Not only do we develop HVAC systems and the thermal systems fully in-house, we actually develop a whole host of cutting edge technologies and systems with an absolute industry leading expert team. One to mention would be our 12 volt highly redundant ethernet architecture and that ensures redundancy for data management. Not only have we built a hardware based security into our gateway controllers, but the high bandwidth ethernet and code structure that we are using for the message transfer ensures that we are a very safe network. At the core of our Dream Drive system, we have a host of 32 ADAS sensors built into the car. That's comprised of ultrasonic sensors, radar sensors, and a industry-first high-definition LiDAR system that generates a very high-res point cloud that we can use to identify objects in front of the vehicle. We fuse this data from this high-res LiDAR with the data we are getting from the radars and the cameras and create a real realistic and redundant space for the vehicle to find its path in. We also have a camera inside the car, a driver monitoring system. The key benefit is that the car knows where the driver is looking and whether he's attentive and can take over in tricky situations. On top of that, the driver monitoring system enables comfort features that would be driven by facial recognition. Part of the Dream Drive system is of course a state-of-the-art park assist system that lets you hands off park into tight parking spots with no fear of scratching your rims. Like all features in the Lucid Air, we can update the whole Dream Drive experience over the air over time with potential to grow into a full autonomous driving system and keep the system fresh, attentive and state-of-the-art. And it'll be standard on the Dream Edition of the Lucid Air. In addition to the active safety that we are covering with Dream Drive system, we have focused a lot of attention and ingenuity on developing a super safe passive safety system. And that's comprised of a very safe passenger cell. We have developed a comprehensive airbag and seatbelt suite that will achieve five star safety rating in the US NCAP safety rating standards. I'm particularly proud that we've been able to re-engineer a headlamp completely. We're using our microlens array optical system. A key benefit of these microlens arrays is also that we can maintain a very high level of efficiency of energy that we convert into light. Miniaturizing the light module enables us to have the slimmest light output aperture in the industry. On top of that, it's also the most luminant light. It's, it's super bright. A further innovation is a solid state swiveling high beam. And we've got thousands of little optical channels that distribute the light super evenly onto the road in front of the driver. And with that projection of thousands of images on top of each other, we actually achieve the most homogeneous headlight of any car out there. That was only possible because we have a stellar in-house optical engineering team. It's a completely rethought technology approach to a headlamp. Another aspect that's fully developed in-house is our 924 volt architecture. And that enables us to develop components that are both very, very efficient and also very, very powerful. The advantages of having a 900 volt architecture is that we can actually charge the car really, really fast. And that brings me to our fully in-house developed onboard charging system, the Wunderbox, as we call it. The Wunderbox is a real miracle, as Wunder uh, stipulates. Traditionally, the systems we have integrated into the Wunderbox would be all separate. By integrating them into one housing, ultra compactly packaged, we've managed to give that space back to the occupant. It is ultra efficient by using silicon carbide chip technology for the switching, and we've actually tied it into the crash structure of the vehicle. We can charge with this Wunderbox up to 924 volts. We have a built-in DC-DC converter that provides 400 volts to vehicle systems. And one of the most customer important systems, I feel, is the bi-directionality that we've built into our Wunderbox. Not only can we charge the car from your house, the car can also supply power to your house which is a whole new world of features. This will enable you to use the car as a battery system. In case you have a power outage at your house, your car will keep the lights on. 
Because every Lucid Air has this bidirectionality built in, we can use one Lucid Air to charge up a second Lucid Air. And that leads me also to our stationary battery storage systems, the ESS systems that we are developing for your home. And we are reusing our battery module technology and the power electronics technology to make super efficient home battery systems. On top of our home battery systems, we are developing product lines that can be used in businesses as a backup battery storage or on a utility scale. So the Wunderbox enables us to charge very, very fast on level three charging, which is the latest high power charging standard. It also enables us to use lower voltage infrastructure that is deployed at 400 volts and the Wunderbox boosts that voltage up to the vehicle voltage. In partnering with Electrify America, we are taking advantage of the vast investment that they have made in charging infrastructure throughout the whole country. We have built in complete convenience by integrating with their systems and enabling plug and charge. They have chargers that can deliver up to 1000 volt. That enables us to put a lot of power into the car and charge very, very fast. The first owners will receive three years of unlimited charging on the Electrify America network nationwide. At Lucid, our engineers always push to the limits. And that is on the range front, eking out every last mile out of the energy of the car, as well as performance development. And the Lucid Speed team has been tirelessly developing the performance of the vehicle from a powertrain performance perspective. The vehicle, the chassis, suspension setups, tirelessly being tuned to give the customer the ultimate driving experience. Monster. We looked for over 60 sites in 13 states and we found that Arizona is a perfect place to build a factory. It is very important to start your factory from the scratch and wrap it around the product you have and wrap it around the processes you want to build there. So once you start to build a greenfield factory, it's the best approach ever, because otherwise you create waste and the factory will not be perfect like it should be to be efficient, cost-effective and quality-driven. Our factory is the first greenfield EV factory in North America and I'm very proud to be part of that. It will be the fastest factory built within eight months and some weeks to get the first cars out there. This is really astonishing. This factory is super unique because it is wrapped around the 10-year plan. So what you see now is just plan phase number one. And the paint shop is the cornerstone of this factory. And we built the factory around this. So this factory can scale tenfold, which is, as I know, never has been done before. It can go up to 60 jobs per hour within 10 years. And yep, that will happen. I'm proud of my team. They are experts on their topic and I have to keep up with them. That's hard. It's hard work because they're brilliant. They believe in what we are doing together and what we want to achieve and where we want to go. 
There are two factories. We have in Casa Grande also a powertrain factory. So we are building the core of our car, which is the technology from the very beginning to the end and deliver it to the main factory so the team can build that into the car. This is the core competence that we built up there because this is a very highly automated and very precise manufacturing method to get that done. And if you want to build a luxury vehicle without quality, there's no way. You need quality in your processes, in your design, in your product, in everything you do. And so we're starting the factory with the quality-driven ramp. We will not hit numbers because we want to hit numbers. That doesn't make sense in a luxury segment. We will hit quality achievements and quality goals and move forward. And once we hit them, then we can create higher numbers. That is the path how we want to move forward and make a community of lucid fans who are super convinced of our products, of our story, of our culture, of what we believe is important for our planet and for our community. Our approach was to put all the love and care that we put into the Lucid Air into our retail experience, and we refer to those as studios. We wanted it to be totally different than your traditional automotive dealership. We took inspiration from mid-century architecture and really brought that ambiance and warmth into the space to make it almost feel like a living room so our customers feel completely immersed in the Lucid experience. Our first studio and service center outside the Lucid headquarters is established in Beverly Hills, California. That is just the first of 20 that we'll establish throughout North America throughout 2021. We know that consumers want to have a direct relationship with the brands that they love, and we want to enable that in every single touch point, whether that's a completely online digital sales experience or one that is in our showroom and personal. So the overall store experience is meant to be very immersive, and it's also meant to be a continuation of the online experience. So we wanted to reinvent the online configurator. We look towards video games for inspiration to create a more immersive, more rendered experience. A consumer can go online, compare the base Lucid Air to the touring level as well as grand touring level and see all the trim variations in between. Save it out on their Lucid ID, then at a later time, visit a studio present their Lucid ID, and have that same configuration experience on our virtual reality platform. In addition to the virtual experience, they'll also be able to have the physical experience. They'll be able to touch and feel all the key materials in all the different configurations that are available for Lucid Air. Each studio will be equipped with a full display of our battery, motor, inverter, and Wunderbox. That way they can learn what's at the very heart of the Lucid Air. We're gonna launch Lucid Air with a remarkable version, the Dream Edition. And unashamedly, it's my personal choice of car. It's got over a thousand horsepower, giving it a 0 to 60 time in under 2.5 seconds and a standing quarter in 9.9. .9. And because it achieves this with the most unsurpassed efficiency, the car has remarkable range as well. So this, this car has performance and range in a unique fusion. Dream Edition will come in three unique colors, white, black, and gold, with Santa Monica interior. It will feature unique 21-inch Aero Dream wheels and Dream Edition badging. So Lucid Air will be available in a range of versions, and the mainstay of this will be the Lucid Air Grand Touring. Soon after, we'll produce the Lucid Air Touring version, and that will be available for $95,000 upwards. We anticipate, though, in 2022, making a car which is more affordable, the Lucid Air. We start next spring in 2021 with the exquisite limited edition dream edition and that will be available at $169,000 US. For full details of this range of vehicles please go to our brand new website which has just become live now. You can reserve immediately for $1,000. It goes without saying we're all super proud here at Lucid. Um, this is a big day for us you know to have achieved this and to be able to share 
Lucid Air with the world. It's been over five years of hard work to get to this point. We have an incredible team. We're super proud of Lucid Air and what that vehicle accomplishes. But to be honest, this is just the beginning. All the technologies that have allowed us to reinvent the luxury sedan, our platform, our space concept, all of our components developed entirely in-house, we're gonna take exactly that technology and apply it to a complete range of products. We're looking as far as 10 years into the future and what we have going on here, I think will amaze you. What really excites me is how we can use these technological breakthroughs to benefit more cost-effective, more energy-efficient cars in the future. We're currently about 17% more efficient than the closest competitor, and that can be used to achieve the same range as that competitor with 17% smaller battery pack, which has a multiplier effect on the car. It's akin to a 20% cost saving in batteries implementable today without the cost of industrialization. Another way of looking at it, the 17% extra efficiency is the equivalent of a 17% step gain in battery energy. And we've achieved that now without the billions that it would take to industrialize that. Lucid's technologies have achieved these breakthroughs, the equivalent of 20% cost saving in batteries or 17% energy breakthrough. They've achieved them today and we're putting that into production with Lucid Air early 21. I think it's really important we approach this task with a healthy dose of humility. And I tell the team every day that until we've got Lucid Air in production in Casa Grande next spring, we really haven't achieved a thing. It's also important that we look ahead at the future of the company. And I see three areas where Lucid can make a real difference. First is our cars. Secondly is our technologies. And the third is our technology in others' cars. Taking our cars, we start with Lucid Air Dream Edition, and there's going to be a beguiling range of products which follow that. We have a 10-year plan. They will all feature the highest EV technology on the planet. That is the very DNA of Lucid. Then we look at our technologies. We've transformed the world of electric racing with our battery pack, which is used by all the competitors on the grid in a world championship. That pack enables the full race distance to be achieved with a single charge. This was unprecedented. Nobody believed this was possible just a year or two ago. Also, we have our first ESS, a static energy storage system here in this building, our very first prototype. And what really excites me about this is that our battery packs are made from cost-effective mass production. We can use the same technologies from our car into our static energy storage systems, and then achieve an economy of scale which feeds back to the car. This is going to be huge for us. And then finally, look at our most advanced technology, making that available to other automakers, because time is of the essence. We can't wait. The world needs to move to sustainable mobility as soon as possible. So thanks everyone for tuning in and allowing us to share with you the fruits of labors. But we have one more glimpse of the future that I would like to share with you. So I'd like to introduce Project Gravity.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the live portion of our Global Reveal. My name is Brian, and I'm coming to you from our headquarters in California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us for this amazing moment in the history of our company. This is a story that we've been eager to tell for some time, and we're excited to continue the dialogue with you. Joining me on stage are five of our senior leaders, supported by over 1,400 Lucid team members who have worked so hard to make today possible. Joining us online are reservation holders, fans, and media from around the globe. We're going to take questions from this global audience, as well as from a few members of the press who have joined us here in person in a socially distant manner. So let's go ahead and get started with that first question. So Peter, it's been a long journey. We've been waiting for this day for a while. How do you feel? What's your reaction? Well, firstly, Brian, it's a great privilege and an honor to join thousands and thousands of viewers from around the world. And wherever you are, thank you for your time and your interest in this project, which has been a labor of love for the team. Um, some of you are dialing in from the middle of the night, and it, it, it's great that you can join us. I think uh, today, 9th of September 2020, is uh, a landmark. It's uh, an alignment of many stars. First of all, it's the 170th anniversary of the founding of our state here in California. Uh, it's also World EV Day. Um, I'd like to say that uh, we'd planned all this around the standing quarter mile time, the 9.9 .9 seconds uh, of our car. Maybe we did do that. Um, uh, maybe, maybe that's an exaggeration. <laughs> um, I, I, I think for the entire team, uh, this is a, a moment of pride and time to reflect upon so many years of damn hard work to get us this far. Uh, but for me, um, I feel it's uh, another step on the ladder, a step on this journey. And I won't rest, I won't celebrate until we've got cars out of that factory in Arizona uh, into the hands of customers who appreciate and enjoy this product. Peter, now that we've shared the Lucid Air and the technological breakthroughs in the EV industry. Can you talk a little bit about what you feel are the major achievements that we've made and contributed? Sure. Uh, I think the big achievement for me is the whole concept and layout of the car. Designing a car is about three-dimensional package. That's how we design and lay out a car. And for <coughs> the best part of a century, a car has been designed around a gasoline power plant and layout. This space concept that we've created is truly revolutionary. It's been designed around the potency, the potential of a true miniaturized electric powertrain, taking that to a level that's never been done before. We have a car which is more compact, more agile, and eminently more usable in an urban environment on the outside. And we couple that with perhaps the ultimate luxury of space. No longer do we need a large barge of a car to accommodate uh, a, 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 a spacious interior. And how we've been able to achieve that is with our core technology, which has been achieved 100% in-house. And there are three facets to how we've approached that and what that powertrain represents. First of all, you've seen the miniaturization, which has enabled that uh, space concept to be successfully executed. Secondly, we've seen the performance, and by the performance, I mean the sheer raw power of this, but something which is more exciting to me, the sheer efficiency of the system. But there's a third, even more exciting facet and dimension to this technology, which is less evident from all we've shown today. And that is that it's designed for mass, mass production, mass industrialization. And that may surprise the audience. Uh, we're starting with a relatively high-end product, not super mass produced, an exclusive product. But it's that future looking, that future vision, that enables this mass produced technology to reduce cost, which will enable it to cascade into lower echelons of the market. And this will transform the way mankind mobilizes, and it will make the car, the true EV experience, more accessible to more people. Thanks, Peter. I think you've really addressed one of James Carter's <coughs> questions in the World EV Day team about the value of building that car from the ground up. 
Um, Derek, we talked a lot about the technology, the power, and the range, um, but there's also a beauty in the design of the sedan. Where did your inspiration come from? I mean, that's a little bit of a difficult question because it's a lot of different things. You know, we, lo we look at uh, a very eclectic range of influences. Certainly, we're inspired by our state here in California of beauty and technology. But I think um, as we got deeper into the program and, and understood kind of the uh, packaging, the space concept, um, the size of the vehicle on the inside versus the outside, aerodynamics became a really uh, driving factor. I know Peter and I are both love aircraft and aviation and try to bring as much of that into the vehicle as possible. Certainly um, the materials that Sue is always talking about and so focused on also uh, looking at architecture, design, trying to bring as much into that as possible. Um, the inspiration really comes from a range of places. Now, Derek, we've talked a lot about the car, but we're also rethinking the relationship with the customer. Help me with that experience. Yeah, this has been a big focus for us because let's be honest, I, you know, I don't want to speak for other people, but I know I don't enjoy car dealerships and car shopping. So we want to make that a better experience. And it really um, starts online, you know, everybody's digital, everybody's used to transacting online. And so we wanted to give as much a digital experience as possible, but that meant that we needed to dive deeper into the website, um, talk about our technologies, share our stories of creation, and of course, our online configurator. We wanted that to be really immersive and really connect with people digitally, but also give a strong sense of a rendered realism and in inter interaction um, with the customer. And then when we start to think about our retail experience, again, we want this to be a very um, a, a, a nice place to visit, but it's still casual, it's approachable. If you just wanna come and learn more, come and learn more, there's no pressure. And so um, the next step there is to bring that digital experience into the retail space through our virtual reality uh, platform um, and, and engaging that way. And then lastly, if you do end up in a, lu a lucid air, that digital experience, the user experience, will create a continuity all the way back through all those prior experiences. And Derek, this configurator is really a world first technology in this space, right? Yeah, we worked very hard with our partners. Um, I, I mean, go check it out. That's all I can say. I'm, I'm super proud of it. And it's a, it's a great way to share and learn about lucid air. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, Sue, now you've put a lot of years of effort into this. You put a, there's been a lot of stress, uh, a lot of late nights, I'm sure. Um, how does it feel to now have your work shared with the world? Well, it feels amazing. I'm super proud of the work. Um, you know, we've had a, an amazing team of people uh, to work with here, the experts here. Um, it's a real collaboration. Um, yes, it feels sort of like my own baby, but <laughs> I know that it took an enormous amount of um, teamwork and dedication and just it's really exciting and super proud right now. So, Sue, there was so much attention to detail put into so many parts of the car. Um, what was the first design piece to really come together? I know I've talked about this before, this idea of when I first came to the studio and met with Derek and then also Peter and just hearing their vision and, um, you know, this idea of being able to build a car from the ground up. I mean, it's really a designer's dream in so many ways. We didn't have this legacy, and we had this opportunity to build our own legacy. And from a color and material uh, and finished perspective, that being what my group has done here, I just saw such great opportunity to really lean into sort of that California legacy. And it ended up being a really natural fit. So for me, that seemed like just the perfect spot to begin, and it, it, it came very naturally and easy. All right, now it wasn't all natural and easy. What was the most <laughs> difficult design aspect to get grounded on and, and to complete? Well, there's been a lot of challenges for sure, and I think that's just part of the nature of what we're doing. But one of the, I'd say, biggest challenges has been the cabin rail, which um, you can see behind me on the exterior of the car. It's a singular piece of aluminum and to really capture that singular piece in that length and to get the fine sort of crafted quality finish that's on there um, has taken 
a lot of um, energy and a lot of expertise, a lot of support from our suppliers, a lot of support in-house from the engineers. So it wasn't just um, color and materials wanting to have this finish on it. it, it it took a lot more than um, sort of a wish and a desire. It really took this sort of collective. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of collaboration across a lot of folks. Indeed it was, and I'm super proud of it. And it's such an iconic piece of the exterior of the car design. So let's shift gears a little bit. So um, Peter, uh, Siddharth, one of our reservation holders, has got a question that I know you've thought a lot about. Um, we're building out a new car in a new facility. How are we going to ensure quality with these initial releases while still building for scale? Oh, wow, yeah. If you, if you launch a new product, that's always a challenge. If you launch a new vehicle, it's a super freaking challenge, and it's like an earthquake. <laughs> you have new parts. You have new processes. You have new, 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 new team members coming in. You have a new factory. Everything is new, and you better be prepared. And we are prepared. <clears throat> We're very well prepared. First of all, we have our... Lucid Manufacturing Leadership Team. They are super experienced and they made several product launches in their career already, in both, in automotive environments and in EV startups. Secondly, we have a brilliant team that we trained over the last year here in, in California, building our engineering cars here, and they learned everything from the ground up, making their old, own workbooks and everything like that. And the third, third element is we don't work in silos. We work in cross-functional teams. So my manufacturing team is working together with Eric's engineering team, with Peter Hazenkamp's supply chain, supply chain team, working together with the ADAS team, the software team. So we're working close together to make that happen. And then finally, we have our Lucid production system, a powerful tool that enables us to make continuous improvement, that enables us to have a problem-solving uh, technologies and techniques that we put in there. And uh, also it has a vision and a mission about quality. And then one of the most powerful tools of it is our core value that enables us, that drives us, that drives a culture of uh, engagement and of passion for quality, for perfection and precision. That's fantastic. Um, Eric, I'd like to dive into the technology now. Um, we've got a ton of questions online about charging. And we know that this is one of those key questions that uh, gas-powered owners continue to sit with. I think Peter referred to it as a sort of you know, range doubt or range concern. Why did we choose a 900-volt architecture? And what are our long-term charging infrastructure plans? Well, first of all, to reduce the amount of times a customer actually needs to go to charge, Lucid Air comes with over 500 miles on, of range on a single charge. Our world leading efficiency of 4.5, above 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour makes charging faster and also reduces the cost of a mile driven. Our charging strategy has been first and foremost designed with the customer in mind. And it's intended to provide convenient access to really fast charging. Our 900 plus high voltage architecture uh, enables us amongst other benefits um, to take advantage of the 350 kilowatt charging infrastructure out there. And with that, we can achieve 300 miles of range in just 20 minutes. With our partner, Electrify America, we are providing access to and three years of unlimited free charging on the nation's largest and continuously growing high power charging network. With our combo socket and our Wunderbox inside the Lucid Air, we are compatible with a vast number of third-party chargers, including heritage 400-volt infrastructure. That's awesome. Uh, let me come back now on a question that I know a number of folks have had around climate. Um, 
the global conversation around climate change, we've seen extreme weather here on the West Coast. Right now, we've got heat waves, we've got wildfires, and we've had droughts and rolling blackouts from some of the utilities. How has this influenced some of our thinking? Well, the Lucid Air with its wonder box is perfectly prepared for such events. Not only can we charge the car with it, we can also use the battery inside the car to power your home and keep the lights on. And maybe in combination with our stationary storage systems or our home battery systems. So we believe that vehicle to grid applications are the next major step towards sustainable transportation and a significantly more efficient use of our energy resources. Now, Eric Wunderbachs, where did this name come from? It seemed to be some Germanic genes in there. All right, <laughs> all right, we'll come back on that. Um, Peter, I'd like to talk to you about pricing. Pricing is always a, a topic of conversation, and, uh, and as a luxury sedan, how did we arrive at, uh, at your pricing and, and some of the models? <laughs> Well, Lucid Air will be available from under $80,000, and that Air model will be available in 2022. Um, it, before that, um, and moving up the, the range, um, the Lucid Air Touring will be available in late 21 from $95,000 US. And the range topping a Lucid Air Grand Touring will be available uh, mid-21 from $139,000 US. But of course, we start with, unashamedly, the car I love, the Dream <laughs> Edition, which is right here behind us, because it's got that mid-range punch, it's got the 1,000 horsepower, uh, the 9.9 .9 seconds, don't forget that, Brian, and incredible range. Uh, there isn't a car in the market quite like it for triple the price. I think it's actually a snip at 169,000. Now, Peter, is there any truth to the fact the car had to tap the brakes to hit the 9.9 so that it aligned with our date? <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a happy coincidence, All which right. uh, sometimes we, uh, we create. All right, very good. <laughs> um, Derek, the Lucid Air is now launched. And, and as, uh, as we've always um, kind of held as a model here, we're continuing to look forward. And we got to see a quick glimpse of the Project Gravity and the SUV. How do you see it and some of the future models helping to evolve and advance what we've already brought to market in the air? Yeah, I mean, it, Peter's talked about the space concept and how important that's been to Lucid Air, and, and it's really defined the product. But we're not just launching a car, we're launching a brand, right? And, and the first product helps define that, but the second and the third and the fourth have to, to elevate that even further. So we're really um, taking a deep look at the architecture, uh, applying that to, to Project Gravity, and, and making sure that that has all the values and the incredible experience and, and really takes SUV crossover space to the next level, much the way uh, Lucid Air has for the sedan. Um, but we're also looking at a broader range of products seven to 10 years out. What else can we do with this amazing technology, with this incredible platform, the versatility, the performance, the space? There's a whole range of product possibilities there. And um, so we're currently exploring that. And I'm, I'm super excited with what the team's been coming up with. Yeah. That's right. I'm excited to see the gravity in my, uh, in my garage in the next couple of years. <laughs> Um, you and me both. <laughs> Sue, we talk about innovation, and whenever we talk about innovation, sustainability is always aligned with that these days. Um, how do we think about the current topics in the world and materials influencing some of our choices when we think about sustainability? Well, it's a subject we talk about a lot here. I don't think you can build an EV without incorporating sustainable materials. Um, we know that um, our market is um, already um, in, in, uh, partaking in that in their own personal lives, whether that's through shopping through organics and local shopping and buying materials that are healthier for um, fashion. Um, less disposable clothing. There's a lot of things happening on this topic. Um, and from our perspective, of course, we want to use sustainable materials, and we are using sustainable, 
sustainable materials. It's a personal passion of mine, um, as well as it is here at Lucid. And we're looking at materials such as um, we have a beautiful textile in our interior. It's a combination of wool with 100% recyclable polyester. And it's from an alpaca, so we use the natural color of their um, wool. <laughs> and so it means less dye stuffs. And that means less chemicals. We also look at our supplier base and look at where their materials are coming from, um, where the raw goods are coming from, what the logistics are of those, how far they have to travel to the manufacturing plant, how they're manufactured in the plant. So we really are looking at so many aspects of this. And we want to continue um, not only with all the sort of sustainable materials that we already have in air, but as we move into our next products um, to push that even further. Well, it sounds like it's really influencing from the beginning to the end of the thinking process. Yeah, very um, important. Let me stay with you on a new concept. So, so in the video, we talked about this concept of space duality when we were talking about the inside of the car. Space duality, can you break that down a bit more for us? Well, I think Derek and Peter have both talked about this, um, the amount of space that we have on the interior of the car. And the conversation really started with CMF, um, between CMF, which is the color material design group, and the interior design group, um, about wanting to have a different experience on the interior of the car, not only because we had more space, but how could the color material sort of enhance this idea of the front being a more active place in the car, you know, where you drive, versus the more passive experience you have in the back seat. And with the amount of space that we have, on top of having this beautiful canopy roof, um, the experience in the back seat is really unique. And by changing the color back there, um, making it different than the front occupants, um, it really sort of set that um, idea in place. And what I found really interesting at some of our past events is people want to get in our back seat first. <laughs> and that's really unusual. I yeah. mean, normally you're buying a new car. The first thing you do is you open the front door, get into the driver's seat, put your hand on the steering wheel, and sort of run your hand over all the beautiful materials and you know the knobs and switches. And yet, our customers want to get in our back seat. And I think that says so much about how special our back seat experience is and how much room there ba is back there. And lastly, that um, you don't feel uh, discounted or ignored. You really do feel like you're in the car having a conversation with all occupants. So it's been sort of a surprise. Now, Sue, my kids have been yelling shotgun for years to get in the passenger seat. Are you telling me those days are over? Well, they may be. We'll All right. See. All right. Um, Peter, Arizona for the, for the factory location. You mentioned reviewing a number of states. How did we actually choose and settle on Arizona? Yeah, first of all, we made a very extensive search in, over, in 13 U.S. states and over 60 locations. And we looked at factors in regards to um, geographic location, infrastructure, um, nearby supply bases, and also looked at talent. And um, we decided to build the, worst, wor the world's most advanced vehicle and to, to build the first EV greenfield factory in the US in Casa Grande in Arizona. And that's a great place to be. And I can tell you when I, come, when I talk about the talent we found there, these are people who are eager to learn, they're willing to step up, they want to build a quality car and Arizona, Pinal County, the city of Casa Grande, they support us so much. And you can see that in the results. Um, we built the world's fastest factory in less than nine, nine months there. And that is really great. Peter, do we have a world record on our hands here? Oh, in terms you of bet. That's build? a world record, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you touched on a greenfield factory. 
um, and the advantages of a greenfield versus retrofitting in somebody else's factory. Um, can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Um, building a greenfield factory from, from, from a, a clean slate is, is really a, a good thing to do because you have your processes and you can design and build your factory around these processes. And, and it's super efficient what you're doing then there. And, you, and what we did is also we can scale our factory up. So we build it first a little bit smaller, and then we go up to tenfold of it. And that's the most efficient way you can do it. You can never do that with an existing plant. You always have a plant from the 20th century, and you have to follow the processes of that decade or century. Now, Peter, I'd like, to get, I'd like to put you on the spot and get specific, right? Nine months, we've got uh, cars that are being built there. What are we building now at the factory? And kind of lay out the next six months for us. Yeah. So now at the moment, the first engineering cars are, are rolling out of General Assembly. And uh, these are cars that we will hang, hand over to Eric's teams and uh, that they get tested, finally tested, and, and final tested now. And then we're going to step into RCs, so-called so RCs. These are release candidates. These are cars for manufacturing that we can dial in our equipment to the fraction of a millimeter so we can produce quality in next spring when we will SOP, have start of production, and hand over the first cars to our customers. Super excited. Well, that'll be an exciting spring indeed. Um, Eric, we've had some questions from reservation holders all around the world, including Loe, who want to know how we're preparing the Lucid Air to keep that incredible level of performance in some of the world's most extreme climates, like the Arabian Gulf or some of the deserts here in the US. Yeah, extreme climates for me immediately lead me into our in-house designed and developed heating air conditioning and thermal systems. First and foremost, they are designed to keep our drivers and passengers comfortable in our spacious cabin, obviously. Uh, secondly, the heating and cooling provides our powertrain components with what they need to perform optimally for performance and efficiency. Now, if we zoom down into our battery pack and there into our battery modules, we have developed race-proven and highly efficient heating and cooling methods that we've perfected for scalability and for cost. Now, it's one thing to design. It's another thing to test. Can you share a little bit about where we conducted some of these testing such that we have the confidence in the performance? Well. Our teams have frozen up in Minnesota for many, many months during winter testing. Or we have also taken advantage of this heat wave this year and tested our, our vehicles for hot climate in Nevada and our home state for manufacturing in Arizona. And we've proven to ourselves that our systems are capable of everything they need to do to keep the customers as well as the powertrain happy and performing. Now, I hate to say this, but I really want to take this car rather to test on the German Autobahn. <laughs> that's where it's going to excel. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, uh, you, Peter, when we talk about investment in Lucid Motors, um, Arthur, one of our reservation holders, um, is a question around Lucid's IPO strategy, right? Are we thinking about going public, and, um, and what's the timing that we're thinking? Yes, uh, it's part of our strategy to IPO. We anticipate doing that within the next couple of years. And I'm so cognizant of what a hot space this is at the moment. There's a lot of investment interest in this sustainable mobility space. And I think one of the big differentiators of Lucid cut us to the core. We're a tech company. We're a tech company. We're doing energy storage. We've got battery technology. We're a fusion of software and hardware. And we do cars. The car is really a, a computer on wheels as much as it is a car. And we see that, all those systems. And that tech really differentiates this company. All the core tech is in-house. 
unashamedly. It's not want to be or would like to be sometime in the future. It's here and it's now and it's implementable. And I think that makes a huge differentiation. So yeah, IPO is on the way. It's a matter of when. And please watch this space. Derek, uh, towards the tail end of the film, uh, Peter tried to uncover a car and you quickly shut him down. Yeah, he got uh, a little carried away there. We had to had to put that cover back down. Nice day. <laughs> Help me with what excites you most when you think about those future models and the design elements. I, I think, um, you know, we worked really hard from, from day one to come up with a Lucid DNA that was not just amazing for Lucid Air, but we could apply hopefully to future products and had a, a way to evolve. Um, and so I mentioned earlier, we're, we're already working on several different product ideas uh, out beyond lucid air, out beyond um, gravity, um, that we can apply that DNA to. Um, of course, everything we do, we're, we're thinking about our, our future customer. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to get in, in, in our head in that space. I know all of us love cars. We love technology. You know, we're partly designing cars for ourselves, but we're also thinking about that consumer. Uh, we often re refer to a post-luxury consumer, someone looking for something more than just traditional luxury. They're looking for technology, they're looking for experience, um, obviously performance and efficiency. They care about sustainability and uh, the products we're working on, I think will really define that space in the future. Now, Peter, we've talked about the, uh, the future of the models of the car. We've talked about the future from a, an IPO strategy perspective. Kind of the third pillar really is around some of our technology. Can you help me? You've touched on it a bit, but how do we think about the long-term strategy of this company? Yeah, well, first of all, I think it's uh, important we approach this with a healthy dose of humility. Until we've got Lucid Air into production, uh, we really haven't achieved a thing. But I do think we need to have a vision and a strategy. And I see three prongs, as I've outlined in the, in, in the video. First is our cars. We're going to have a beguiling range of cars. We have a 10-year plan. We have a multi-platform plan uh, to really take electrification to a whole new level. I promised when I came here we'd take it to another level. I believe this is the first manifestation of that. And we're going to see progressively, relentlessly, we'll keep that position of the highest technology in our products. So that's our, the car products. But also, we have this tech division, our technology division. And a great example is the, the, what we're doing in, in the world of World Championship Motorsport. Uh, we really turned that on its head with our technology. We're going to do the same with our energy storage because of its sheer economy of scale and mass producibility. That's what we've really cracked. I want to do huge things with solar and renewables. And I see that division of the company, frankly, being as big as our, our cars over the next six years. Um, and then the third thing, which is quite exciting, uh, because our, our technology is so miniaturized, and uh, because of its efficiency, that drives down cost, and it's further driven and amplified that cost down by the manufacturability, I can see our product in other manufacturers' cars, because I think that uh, time is of the essence. So those are the three pillars our cars, our tech, and our tech in other manufacturers' cars. Now, Peter, as we, uh, as we look to bring this Q&A to a close, it's been a seven-year journey for you. I'd love to invite you for any kind of closing remarks today as we, uh, as we conclude the reveal of the global, of the global reveal of the Lucid Air. Well, thank you. It's been a real privilege for so many people from around the world to join us, wherever you are, this morning, this evening, this night, for joining us. I feel that the world has shrunk a little bit uh, for you to uh, hopefully enjoy uh, what we've had to show. Um, as you can see, it's been a labor of love from over 1,400 people. It's a huge team effort, and I've got a, a great... Uh, who couldn't fail with a great team like this? And, and there's so many more behind the scenes, and no one person does this. It's a huge collaborative effort, and that's what we need to inspire to change the world, to make the, the world a better place. And, uh, and, and, you know, I come back to this, this recurrent theme. It's very difficult for me to demonstrate this to our audience right now. But what excites me the most and what drives me is that the technology we create today for this 
world-leading high-end product can readily cascade into other echelons of the market and make sustainable mobility a reality for all in the very near future. And we all need that. The environment needs that. We need to accelerate that process. So with that vision, uh, I hope you uh, are equally inspired by our vision and it's goodbye from Silicon Valley to the Lucid community worldwide. Thank you for sharing with us. And goodbye from Silicon Valley.